Hello and welcome to this bouillon... Bouillon... Hello and welcome to this water physics tutorial. So today we're going to see how we can have some rigid body floats on water. In the first part of this tutorial we're going to see how we can have objects float on still water, so without any waves. And then we're going to expand on that code in order to have rigid bodies react to ocean movement. So, since this is going to be pretty long, let's get started straight ahead. Let's create a plane, which is going to be our water. Remove the collider. And let's just scale it a bit. Then let's add a rigid body. Let's choose a cube. And this is going to be our floating object. So in order to have the scene look a bit better, I'm going to create a quick ocean shader. But since it's not the point of the tutorial, I will speed it up. And although I will show you the node graph at the end, I encourage you to go see another tutorial. Um, like Polytoots is a great resource and he's a really funny guy. So uh, please go watch it. I guess now is a good time to say that um, you don't need to be in any specific render pipeline to follow this tutorial. I'm doing it in HDRP, but you could also do it in URP or even in the standard render pipeline if you have uh, Amplify Shader or if you're just very smart and know how to code uh, Shader by hand. So as you can see, it's a very simple shader. I'm just lurping between two colors and I'm adding a normal map on top of that, which is slowly scrolling. Um, there's also a depth effect that you can see here in action. Uh, all in all, it's very simple and it doesn't look very good, but it will be good enough for this tutorial. So now I'm going to slowly scroll through my shader so that you can copy it if you want. But if you have followed my advice and picked another better shader, you can just skip this section and join me in the next one. Okay, so we're three minutes in and we still haven't done anything that helps with floating objects. So let's just create a script and open it. The first thing that we're going to do is to say that this script requires a rigid body. This way it will automatically add one when you add the script to a game object. Then we're going to add a few variables, a few floats which will define the drag effect of the rigid body both under and over water. So both a linear drag and an angular drag. So that's for underwater and then we're just going to add an air drag. I'm just going to set the air drag to the rigid body default, which is zero and 0 0.05. And for the underwater, I, you know, I picked three and one, but you will have to play uh, with the values yourself. We're going to need a reference to a rigid body and a state ball that will tell us whether we are underwater or above the water. And finally, we're going to add this floating power, which is going to decide how strong the force we apply to the rigid body is. So in the start function, we're going to just get a reference to our rigid body and then we're going to change the update function to fixed update because this is all physics. So first we're going to create a local variable which is going to calculate the difference between the rigid body that we are working with and the height of the water. So for that I'm just going to add an, another public float which is going to be called water height. So a simple subtraction 
Okay, so I just renamed that because even by my standard that was very unclear. Then we're going to check if the rigid body is below the water. If it is, we're going to add a force, which is going to be uh, upwards, so vector3.up, and multiplied by the floating power, as well as um, the difference between the position of the rigid body and the water, because the lower the rigid body is, we want the stronger the force, right? Like if you put a floating balloon very low underwater and you release it, it will jump above the water. And we're using a force mode, which is force. Then we're going to check if our underwater boolean was false. So previously the rigid body was not under the water. And if it was false, we're going to switch it to true. Finally, if the difference was above zero, so the rigid body was above the water and we add a um, boolean state set to underwater, then we're going to switch that to false. Finally, let's create a switch state function that will allow us to change between our underwater drag and our air drag. If we're going to the underwater state, then we are going to set the rigid body's drag variables to the one that we have defined previously. And if we're going to above the water, then we're going to do the opposite. Finally, we're just going to call the function in fixed updates, but only if we have switched from one state to the other this frame, so that we don't have to call it every single fixed update. Okay, well, that's done. So let's compile, add the script to the rigid body. Let's, you know, change the mass to something like four kilograms and we'll see if that's enough. Hit play. Ta-da! Okay, so here we have an issue, which is that the rigid body is too heavy or the floating power is too low. So let's just raise this, raise it more. Raise it more. Okay, now we have something that looks like an actual floating object. And you can see that if you drop it, it just has this sort of spring-like motion. And let's duplicate it a bunch. And yeah, this is it. You now know how to make a simple floating object. Now, it works only on flat surfaces because, as you remember, we're just checking whether the rigid body is below or above a certain height. Now that's all fine for simple objects, but what if we want to have like platforms on which the player can step? Well, that won't work with the system we've just built because we're just checking whether the rigid body is below or under the water. But a more complex object will have multiple points that can be either above or below the water. So the way this works is we're going to have to change our script a bit. We're going to create an array of transforms, which are going to be floaters. So like a list of little bureaus that we're going to use to add forces to different parts of the rigid body. You'll see it's quite easy to adapt the script that we've already made for that. So for every one of these floaters, which can be one for the simple objects as we've seen, but it can be also two, three, four. We're going to check whether each floater is below or above the water, right? So let's use a for loop. And then instead of checking the rigid body's position, we're going to check the floater position. Then if the floater is below the water, we're going to add a force to the rigid body, but at the position of the floater. Now it gets a bit tricky when we want to check whether the object is under or above the water because some floaters can be below and some floaters can be above at the same time. So the rule that I've chosen is that if all the floaters are above the water, then 
the rigid body is above the water, but if even one floater is below the water, then we're going to apply the water drag, which is sort of an arbitrary thing. But to do this, we are going to add an int, which is called floaters underwater. And with, at each fix update, we're going to set it to zero. And if during the for loop, any floater is below the water, then we're going to increment um, that int. Then we're going to check whether the floaters underwater is equal to zero, because if it is, it means that no floaters is underwater, and then we can switch to the above water state. Um, now you'd say we could have used only a bool, which is true, but this way we can know precisely how many floaters are underwater at any point, which can be used uh, you know, in further uh, implementations or more complex behaviors. So yeah, let's edit the settings a bit. And then we're going to add some floaters. So it's going to be pretty easy. So first of all, yeah, for the simple boy, I just going to add the object itself as its own floater. And for the more complex platform, I'm just going to add a few game objects uh, at each corner of the shape. You could uh, add some gizmos to make them visible, which is what I did uh, in the final version. But for this, I think it's just enough to do it like this. Then add all the floaters to the script and we're good to go. Let's try it. And here you go. So it's kind of working, but as you can see, it's a bit too thin. So I'm just going to quickly edit the settings. Okay, well, it's working. As you can see, it's very floaty and you can edit that very easily either by changing the weight of the rigid body or the floating power of, um, of the script that we've made. And the lower it is, the lower the rigid body will find the equilibrium point. And what's really awesome about this technique is that then you can very easily add other rigid bodies and it will just react realistically with it. Uh, as you can see. So if your player controller uses rigid bodies, it is as simple as that. Uh, you can just have them walk on platforms and if they're too heavy or if they go too much to the side, the platform will just capsize. So that's the end of this first part. Um, in the next part, we'll see how we can adapt this script and um, the simple shader we've made in order to have the rigid bodies react to the waves of the ocean. So stay tuned for that and see you next time.